What is going on guys? Welcome to today's video. Today I'll be showing you how to set up your very own object tracker using YOLO version 3, Deep Sort, and TensorFlow. So like I just said, we're going to be implementing the object tracker using YOLO version 3, which is one of the state-of-the-art, fast, and accurate deep convolutional neural networks to allow for us to perform object detection. And this will feed into Deep Sort, which is a real-time tracking software that uses deep learning association metrics. And this will come together using TensorFlow and allow us to create a powerful real-time object tracker. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, as usual, first things first, we need to go ahead and grab the code for this tutorial. So you're gonna go over to my GitHub, the AI guys code, and it's gonna be the first uh, repo pinned. And as always, I'll also put the in the description below uh, the code, the link to the code. So you can always just go down into the description and grab it. And then you're gonna go to clone or download and you're just gonna copy there and then go ahead, open up a command prompt or shell and just do git clone and then paste that in there. And that's gonna go ahead and download all the code necessary that you need for this tutorial. And as always, I have a pretty decent readme where you can see exactly the steps. So if you get stuck or somewhere doesn't work, just refer back to the readme of the repository and you should be good to go. So just like my last video, the recommended way of installing the dependencies or requirements um, for the code to run, I recommend um, using Anaconda. And if you're not familiar with Anaconda, I did this in my previous video, um, pretty much for GPU, it just allows you to install an environment and put all the dependencies in one place, really super easy. Uh, so I recommend going and downloading Anaconda if you haven't already. Um, you can also pip install using uh, the requirements.txts that you see uh, in the repository. Um, but as always, yeah, I recommend using Anaconda and that's what we're gonna do today. So I'm just gonna CD into the repository and then you're just gonna run the command conda and create dash F and conda, I'm using the gpu.yaml, but if you were on CPU and you don't have GPU, you would do the CPU one and it works just the same. So we're gonna go ahead and run that and it'll go ahead and install all the requirements that we need, such as TensorFlow, NumPy and all that good stuff. Uh, and we'll come back when it's ready, thanks. So our Conda environment has been created as you can see. Um, so now we can go ahead and do our Conda activate tracker GPU. And the, what, what the great thing about Anaconda is, is that it actually puts all the dependencies for CUDA and all the other things necessary to run with GPU um, kind of baked into the environment so you don't have to worry about it. So if you do pip install um, the requirements and you want GPU, uh, you're gonna have to make sure that your NVIDIA driver and all those kind of things um, are downloaded and properly configured on your machine. So it can be a little messy. Um, so that's kind of why I recommend TensorFlow uh, GPU to do the Conda um, route, but that's just a little extra tidbit. Um, so now we can go and activate our environment. Conda activate tracker GPU. And that's gonna go ahead and now get into the environment so that when we run things, everything works as normal. Um, and now, we're, like my previous video, we're gonna have to go and download the official pre-trained weights. Or if you're used to my old video, you can also use custom um, trained weights and I have a video on that. So if you're trying to train your own custom um, YOLO version three that you want to then feed in to this repository to do object tracking with, I recommend checking out my previous video. And if you just wanna do YOLO by itself, I recommend checking out my um, video that I just put out that allows you to do real time um, video and webcam detections using YOLO. And I'm gonna show you how to do the object tracking today uh, in real time on webcam and video. So let's go ahead and get those weights. I'm just gonna go ahead and click here on your V3 weights. I'm gonna do the full version. If you wanna do the faster version, um, but not as accurate, then you can do YOLO V3 tiny. It's a smaller model, but it allows you to do faster detections. So some people like that, but I'm gonna do the accurate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and download here. Clicking this link, we'll go ahead and download the weights for me. So we're gonna let those download and then I'll show you where to put them. So now that our weights are downloaded, um, 
I did the YOLO V3 normal weights, but you could do tiny as well or your custom. You're just going to go and make sure that you take the weights, copy them, and then throw them into this weights folder inside of the repository, just like that. And then you can now go back to your command prompt and you can load, run the load weights command, which will convert the YOLO version three weights into TensorFlow model files. Um, this is all similar to my previous video, so I'm sorry if it's repetitive. Uh, so I'm going to do the normal YOLO v3 pre-trained on over 80 classes. Um, extremely powerful out of the box. There's also the YOLO version 3 tiny. If you're running the load weights for that, there's a couple extra parameters that you need to, uh, flags that you need to add on. And if you're doing a custom YOLO version 3, there's even uh, more flags to add on. So depending on what you're trying to do with this object tracking, you might have to add and look at the readme. But I'm just going to go back here. And I'm just going to go to Python load weights.py and run that bad boy. And it's going to do, like I said, converting the YOLO version 3 dot weights into dot TF TensorFlow model uh, files. So we're going to let that run and we'll come back. So if all goes well and the weights are loaded correctly, you should see something similar to this. It's going to go ahead and say model YOLO v3 wait saved, and it'll show you the TensorFlow model output. Um, and if it works, it should look like that. And now you are actually ready to go ahead and run the object tracker itself. Um, so it's going to be using the Python object tracker.py file. I'm going to be running just the YOLO v3 on normal video and on webcam. I'll show you guys both. Um, and that's just using the, the pre-trained uh, model. Like I said, that's on 80 classes, has a numerous amount of things it can track. And you'll see that it can, in the video, it'll track multiple objects. Um, if you want, to use YOLO Tiny or a custom YOLO v3. Um, it show, I show you here what kind of extra flags you have to add because um, you can do a lot of cool things if you make a custom model to per se track airplanes or doing something with drones or cars. Cars is in this, in this pre-trained model, so you'll see it. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and run it. So we are just going to go Python object tracker.py. And the first parameter or flag that it takes in is the video. If you're doing it on webcam, you just do zero. Um, otherwise, you actually show the route or the path to the video that you want to run. And you'll see that you all have this video that I'm showing you guys on comes with the repository. So you all can do this exact command and it should work perfectly. And it's just called test.mp4 and it's in data video folder. And the second flag you have to add is, nope, not video, it's output. You don't have to add this actually, but I just do it so it'll actually output the video of the results with the trackings on them uh, for you. So I'm just gonna put it in the same folder and I'm gonna call it results.avi. It has to be an AVI file right now, but if you go down, I have um, other flags that you can add to actually change the output type, um, output format. So if you're trying to save it in a different format, I uh, urge you to play around with this flag. You can check the code to see how it works. But let's go and run that. So it's going to be loading in the weights and the TensorFlow model that we just loaded. Um, so that's going to take a couple seconds before we see the actual object tracking being run. But hopefully it doesn't take too long. It's going to connect to the GPU on my local machine. But like I said, if you don't have GPU, you can run this on CPU. It'll just be fairly slow, um, quite a magnitude slower, in fact. So it's not as real time. But if you're running into issues with it being too slow, um, on this normal model, you can get anywhere between 5 and 10 frames per second around. And if you're using the tiny model on GPU, you can get up to like 45 uh, frames per second, which is like real time, extremely fast. Um, so I recommend playing around with the different ones if you want. You're going to see a bunch of warnings, but it's not actually any errors. And then you can see that it's actually running. And I'm getting around three frames per second, which is quite slow. Um, but if I were to do the tiny, like I said, it would be up to around 40 frames per second and be extremely fast. So you're seeing that it's tracking. And right now it's set to track any of the objects within the pre-trained model that I gave it out of those 80 classes. Um, so you're tracking people. You can see there's, it gets a bicycle that it's tracking as well. And it's just going to run through this. I have the FPS outputting on the top left corner there that you can see. 
um, saying that it's around four to three frames per second, um, which definitely isn't the fastest, but my GPU also isn't the fastest. Um, and that can get up to, like I said, up to 10 frames per second with a strong GPU. And using the tiny again, it gets up to like over 40. Um, but you might see even, even lower results if you're just running on your CPU. Uh, so it varies a lot. So don't worry too much what you're seeing. And you can actually just press Q to go ahead and quit early. So I'm going to do that. Hit Q and it's going to go ahead and close down the program for us. There we go. And now if we go back and we check this data video folder, we can see that it has successfully, as we like we uh, told it to, it has saved the results into this video format so we can reference it and watch it back later, which is pretty sweet. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to close that. And now I'll show you guys that indeed also works using the exact same command and I'll save the results as well. This time I'll call it results two and I will now change it to work on webcam. So I'm going to go ahead and just the video flag set it to zero and that's going to go ahead and trigger the actual webcam to run. So I again forgot to disable my webcam in my recording before I tried to run the command. So it failed because I already have my webcam open. So I have turned off my webcam so that it can now be used by the object tracker. So you'll see that it will indeed work with my webcam once it logs, um, I mean, collects the classes and weights and loads them in, it will pop open my webcam and you'll see that it works just as well as video as it does on webcam and can track the objects successfully. Uh, so you'll see once it pops up, you'll see me and I'll show you guys a couple of different classes that it can track throughout, which is pretty sweet. Um, so comment down below in the comment section, what you're trying to use object tracking for, what classes you're trying to use. Are you using the pre-trained? Are you using maybe something really cool like airplanes or something like I mentioned? Uh, so let me know down below what you guys are tracking and if you have any issues. So we can see it's open, it's popped open. You can see me and if I bring in different objects, it can grab them. Let me grab a mug and see if it can get the cup. And it tracks it throughout. So yeah, you can see that the object tracking indeed works um, using deep sort, YOLO version three and TensorFlow. So it's really cool. Let me go ahead and close that down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop open the code for you guys right now so that I can show you uh, specifically what's going on. Um, so there's the object tracker.py file, which is what we've been using. So here is the actual code um, that implements deep sort along with YOLO version three for the detections. And just a couple things you guys can change if you want. You can uncomment these uh, three lines here. If you want the actual YOLO in real time, um, the constant YOLO detections to be shown as well on the screen, that will actually show all of the YOLO detections going on as the tracker goes on. So you can see that it stays close by um, and what's able to actually detect the, the, the detections themselves. Um, and if you want to remove the FPS on screen, you can remove it here. And actually, as of right now, um, the detections.txt, I have it printing um, the bounding boxes and stuff to a detections.txt file. It's pretty messy. These are the tracker numbers um, and all the, the boxes that it finds. Um, but so if you're trying to actually output the uh, tracked objects, I urge you to hop into the code and uh, play around with what you print out to this file, uh, detections.txt, because I don't really have it fully working right now. Um, that's kind of what I'm currently working on is upping the actual output of how you can track objects when they enter and exit the frame. So might be doing a, might do a video on that if you guys let me know in the comments whether that's what you actually uh, are looking for. But please, yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys want done with this, what kind of tweaks or customizations you want. Um, cause otherwise you'd have to hop in the code here and really get your hands dirty with it, but also refer to read me and that's it. 
So that's really it for this video, everyone. I just wanted to really show you my implementation of object tracking using DeepSort, YOLO ver version 3, and TensorFlow itself. Uh, I hope you guys were able to get it up and running. If you're not, once again, let me know in the comments what your errors are, and I'll try to help you guys out. And also just let me know what you guys want to see in future videos. It means a lot to me. And please subscribe if you haven't to the channel. It helps me grow and helps encourage me to make more content. And smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks, guys.